we find sedimentary rocks exposed all across the southwest, including spectacular examples on the Colorado Plateau and in the Grand Canyon region in particular. These notes describe important sedimentary rock types and include interpretations as to where these rocks may have originally been deposited. Shown here is a conglomerate exposed along the Titus Canyon Road in Death Valley National Park. Once sediment comes to rest in a depositional environment, like a lake, river floodplain, beach, etc., it will either be eroded again or progressively buried. The compaction and cementation that occurs during lithification transforms the sediment into sedimentary rock. This new rock can then be uplifted and undergo the processes of weathering and erosion again. Alternatively, it may stay buried where it may even be changed into a metamorphic rock. The first stage of turning sediment into sedimentary rock is lithification, involving compaction and cementation of sedimentary grains and crystals after deposition. The increasing confining pressure during progressive sedimentary burial squeezes the solid grains together, reducing the amount of void space between the grains. Minerals dissolved in groundwater can precipitate between the grains, thus cementing them together. This all takes time and depending on the type of sediment and burial conditions, it could take thousands to tens of thousands of years to turn sediment into sedimentary rock. This is a rock identification chart for sedimentary rocks. It includes the major textures and other descriptive criteria, as well as comments and depositional environment interpretations. To name a sedimentary rock, we need to first identify its texture as either clastic, chemical, biochemical, or organic. If the rock has a clastic texture, that is made of discrete pieces. We then further describe the grain size, rounding and sorting, etc. before we can ultimately name the rock. For instance, this rock has a clastic texture made up primarily of sand-sized grains, thus it's a sandstone. But there are many types of sandstone, so we need to ask a few more questions about clast rounding, sorting, composition. This rock is very well sorted and composed almost entirely of quartz grains, specifically making it a quartz aronite. If the rock has a non-clastic texture, a chemical or biochemical texture, then we need to determine the composition of the crystals. And we do this with tests of hardness by scratching the rock and effervescence the dreaded fizz test with dilute hydrochloric acid. For instance, this rock has a chemical or even biochemical texture that scratches easily with a steel nail and reacts vigorously with dilute hydrochloric acid. We now know it is composed of the mineral calcite and is therefore a carbonate rock called limestone. There are many varieties of limestone and this one is simply coarsely crystalline limestone. Now let's look at the different types of sedimentary rocks. We'll start with the clastic rocks. A rock with gravel-sized clasts, greater than two millimeters in diameter, is either a conglomerate or a sedimentary breccia. If most of the clasts are angular, then it's a sedimentary breccia. These are typically poorly sorted rocks that, together with their angular clasts, can be interpreted as having relatively short transportation distances in a high energy stream environment. This could be like a debris flow down a mountain stream or across an alluvial fan. Glacier ice can also transport large class with little or no rounding effects and sedimentary breccia commonly composes glacial till and moraine. If most of the class are rounded then it's a conglomerate. These can range from poorly sorted to very well sorted, depending on the environment. The grain size and rounding suggest longer transport distances in high energy conditions, 
like a stream channel or beach. Rocks with greater than 85% sand size class that are between 2 millimeters and 1 16th of a millimeter in size are called sandstones, and there are many different types, typically based on composition. The term aronite is simply a generic term referring to most sandstones. For instance, quartz aronite is a sandstone composed mostly of quartz grains, like greater than 90%, and is typically light in color. This kind of sandstone is compositionally mature, since most of the other minerals have been winnowed out. A feldspathic aronite, or arcos, has abundant feldspar, like greater than 25%, and is typically orange to red in color. This kind of rock is immature due to the abundance of feldspar and other minerals, not just quartz. A gray wacky has abundant mud-sized particles, like between 15 and 75%, and is commonly darker in color. Sandstones are deposited in many different depositional environments. Quartz aronites, clean, well-sorted sand transported by wind and deposited in desert or beach dunes. Arcos is more of a stream channel or alluvial fan sediment. Gray wacky forms in lower energy environments like deep lakes or marine settings. Fine grain plastic rocks have grain sizes less than a sixteenth of a millimeter. Mudstones are rocks composed of greater than 75% mud size clasts, and there are many varieties. For instance, siltstone is composed of about two thirds silt size clasts between 1 16th and 1 256th millimeter in diameter, whereas claystone is more fine grained with mostly clay size clasts less than one 256 millimeter in diameter. That's pretty fine grain. Shale is a commonly used rock name that refers to a mudstone that breaks into thin layers. When a rock breaks like this, we call it fissile. These rocks form in many different low energy depositional environments, from stream floodplains to lagoons to deep marine areas. Typically a reddish color reflects deposition in an oxidizing environment like a stream floodplain or delta, where there is readily available oxygen. Whereas greenish to black colors suggest a more reducing environment, with restricted circulation and less oxygen. And this would be typical in a lagoon, deep lake, or deeper marine environment. Chemical and biochemical rocks are formed largely of mineral crystals, and carbonate rocks form a large group with many textural varieties. The term limestone is used to describe many types of carbonate rock composed of the mineral calcite or calcium carbonate. There are many types of limestone from coarsely crystalline limestone to very fine grain limestone called micrite. Travertine and tufa are commonly layered or porous respectively. And coquina and chalk are carbonate rocks composed of weakly cemented shell fragments, both large and small, respectively. Dolostone is a carbonate rock composed mostly of the mineral dolomite, which is a calcium magnesium carbonate mineral, similar to calcite except that it does not react readily with dilute hydrochloric acid. And this is how we tell the difference between dolostone and limestone. Carbonate rocks have many different depositional environments. For instance, limestone is deposited in shallow to deep marine environments, but also in continental settings like lakes and even estuaries. Travertine and tufa can be found in caves and also in areas where there's significant spring activity. Coquina and chalk are typically found in beach areas or shallow marine areas where wave activity is fairly high. And dolostone can be found in places ranging from dried up desert lakes, called playas, to arid shoreline regions, tidal mudflats, called sabkas. Chemical and biochemical rocks composed largely of silica, or SiO2, are called chert. Chert is extremely hard and does not react with dilute hydrochloric acid. 
It is a fine-grained rock that may be massive, layered, or even nodular. Different varieties include agate, which is distinctly banded, orange to red jasper, petrified wood, etc. Chert typically forms either from groundwater action or in a deep marine environment. Evaporites are chemical sedimentary rocks formed from the evaporation of mineral-rich waters or brines. There are many different compositional varieties, including halides, sulfates, and carbonates. Rock salt is commonly composed of the halides halite, sodium chloride, and sylvite, potassium chloride. Rock gypsum, or gypstone, is based on the sulfate mineral gypsum, which is basically hydrous calcium sulfate. Other evaporites can be formed of carbonate minerals like calcite, dolomite, or trona. These rocks typically form from surface water or groundwater in desert regions, including playas and playa lakes, or coastal area tidal mudflats called sabkas. In all of these areas, evaporation rates are very high and brines are typically present. Organic rocks like coal are formed from the unoxidized, carbon-rich remains of plant material. Coal is usually found in seams, and there are several different types, based on their percentage of carbon. For instance, lignite, or brown coal, is the lowest rank of coal, with 60 to 70 percent carbon. Bituminous coal is black and dense, with 60 to 80 percent carbon. Bituminous is a fairly common type of coal. And then there's the shiny and hard anthracite, having the highest rank, with 92 to 98 percent carbon. Technically, anthracite is a metamorphic rock. All of these forms of coal form from the accumulation of organic material in a low oxygen reducing environment, like wetlands or swamps. Now for a few real world examples of how we interpret sedimentary rocks in order to describe the depositional environments of the geologic past. River floodplain environments are commonly represented by mudstone and sandstone. Floodplain rocks include ripple marks, graded beds, mud cracks, abundant land plant and critter fossils, etc. The interpretation of these rocks in sedimentary structures is low energy deposition in shallow water, flooding, and then exposure to the atmosphere. Floodplain of today, floodplain of the past. A geologist is trained to look at clues in rocks like that and interpret how it originally formed. The Hermit Formation is an example of a coastal river floodplain system during the Permian period between 292 and 284 million years ago. Let's go to the Soap Creek Rapid area along the Colorado River in the Grand Canyon and take a look at the Hermit Formation. Here are excellent exposures of the Permian Hermit Formation just below Soap Creek Rapids on the Colorado River. This thick sequence of red beds is mostly composed of mudstone with lesser thin sandstone beds. Mantling the Hermit Slopes is a veneer of rockfall from the overlying Coconino sandstone and other units. Continental sand dune environments are commonly represented by quartz arenite. Sand dune rocks typically include crossbeds, ripple marks, sparse critter, trace fossils, etc. The interpretation of these sedimentary rocks and structures is wind deposition in desert or beach sand dunes. 
So again, desert sand dune rocks of today, desert sand dunes of the past. The Coconino Sandstone is an example of a coastal sand desert during the Permian period, 284 million to 272 million years ago. This wall of cross-bedded Coconino Sandstone is located along the Upper Bright Angel Trail in the Grand Canyon. Due to its cliff-forming nature, the Coconino does not display well in Google Maps. Its cliffs are highly distorted in 3D view and is barely visible when viewed in 2D from above because it's pretty much a sheer cliff. The Coconino sandstone is exposed in the upper walls of the entire Grand Canyon this section is just below the Grand Canyon Village area, where the Bright Angel Trail is located. Trail access through massive cliff-forming units like the Coconino is usually provided by faults that have broken down the rock. Shallow marine environments are commonly represented by limestone, sandstone, and mudstone. Shallow marine rocks typically include cross beds, graded beds, ripple marks, abundant marine fossils, etc. The interpretation of these rocks and sedimentary structures is a low-energy depositional environment in a shallow ocean, like a continental shelf. So again, shallow marine rocks of today help us reimagine the shallow marine environment of the past. The Redwall Limestone is an example of a shallow marine shelf environment of the Mississippian period, roughly between 353 to 335 million years ago. This massive banded wall is the Mooney Falls member of the Redwall Limestone, exposed along the Colorado River across from a place known as Vasey's Paradise. from South Canyon and Vasey's Paradise, downstream to Redwall Cavern and beyond, the river is lined by the massive Redwall Limestone. The Colorado River forms a gorge in this area as it cuts vertically down into the highly resistant Redwall. This is the part of the river John Wesley Powell called Marble Canyon, referring to the river polished texture of the Redwall limestone along the Colorado. Well, that's all for now. Till next time. <laughs>